Movie monsters come in all shapes and sizes, from Godzilla to gremlins, and just like human celebrities, some of them are much more popular than others. We decided to dig around a little bit and unearth some of the lesser known creatures that don't get quite as much love as the Draculas, the Frankensteins, the aliens, predators, Freddies, Jasons, Chuckies, and so on. I like that you said the Draculas. The Draculas. We wanted to focus on monsters who never got their due, even though they've had plenty of time to achieve cult status, so we skipped more recent movies like The Ritual, Trick or Treat, Krampus, and A Quiet Place, even though the monsters in all those movies kick ass. Those are great monsters. But now, the list. Kathoga for The Relic. Though based on a popular novel, the 1997 movie The Relic bombed critically and commercially when it hit the big screen, but there's no denying that the Aztec god beast Kathoga was badass thanks to Stan Winston's awesome practical creature work, which looked like a cross between the Predator and one of those terror dogs from Ghostbusters. Yeah, he was awful, but I love that dude. <laughs> The Beast of Givaldon in Brotherhood of the Wolf is based on the actual beast that supposedly terrorized the French countryside in the 16th century. Cryptozoologists theorize it may have been a lion, a tiger, or a hyena, or something that escaped from some foppish aristocrat's menagerie. But the movie version kicks things up a notch by making it even more disgusting. That movie is bloodborne as hell. Yeah, watch it. Michael Mann's second directorial outing, The Keep, isn't quite a good movie, but it's got lots of good stuff in it, like Ian McKellen, a soundtrack by Tangerine Dream, and the awesome monster known as Molossar, who looks like he might have inspired some of the enemies in Resident Evil, and he kills a bunch of Nazis. <laughs> yes, Molossar, and keep f you work. Nazis, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, get him. The baby graboids from Tremor 2 are very good. <laughs> <laughs> The baby graboids from Tremors 2 are very good. The entire concept of Tremors hinges on gigantic bus-sized worms that burrow beneath the desert at terrifying speeds, devouring cowboys, campers, and other lonely archetypal dudes living on the fringes of society. But in between eating men and making houses sink into the sand, they also found time to make love and have sex and have babies in the sequel. Look at these little babies. Aren't they great? Can you imagine those big floppy worms just going to town, getting all wet, making babies? Now you can. Speaking of making love, H.R. Giger, who designed the Xenomorph Alien, was tasked with designing another monster for 1995's Species. Everyone knows that Alien is a masterpiece of sci-fi horror with incredible performances, production design, and effects, but Species presupposes that. What if it was more like a horny, late-night, cable softcore porn film where everybody has hot, steamy sex on sofas and in hot tubs and stuff like that? Anyway, that's what Syl is. Horny Xenomorph. I used to have that movie on yeah. VHS. It taught me like a lot of bad lessons about the We learned a lot, a lot of lessons about Those nasty, awful worms from Dreamcatcher and otherwise film. <laughs> movie adaptations of Stephen King's books are pretty hurt or miss, and while Dreamcatcher is mostly a triumphant dis <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> movie adaptations of Stephen King's books are pretty hit or miss. Movie adaptations of Stephen King's books are pretty hit or miss, and while Dreamcatcher is mostly a triumphant disaster, aka hot street trash, those nasty worms were awesome, but they pale in comparison to the scariest creature in the film, which is Morgan Freeman's eyebrows. And also, <laughs> is that dude, is like a dude with special powers, his name's like Duffets or something? <laughs> Duffets? Duffets? That's such a bad movie. Wait, it's so bad, they go in the library of the mind? Oh god. Get out! Shut the door! From Dust Till Dawn is predominantly known as a vampire dive bar film where people throw water balloons full of holy water at demonic alcoholics, but Dust Till Dawn is secretly also a fantastic movie for disturbing human to monster transformations, like when Tom Savini drops to his hands and knees and becomes a big rat for some reason, or when Fred Williamson turns into what looks like an inflated Tyrannosaurus man. Isn't that weird? Great movie! He goes like, and his face gets all fat, fat. I wish that all the vampires were anamorphs. What? Cockroach Men from The Mimic, that's good ones. Oh yeah. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro is not shy about his love of monsters, but the creepy crawly stars of Mimic don't get nearly as much praise as the creatures in his other films like The Shape of Water or Pan's Labyrinth. Mimic was a so-so film, but it's mutant cockroaches who disguise themselves as old men were awesome and creepy as hell, and we love them. Just like regular old men. Old men are disgusting. <laughs> The Stuff is a wonderfully stupid horror movie about a new dessert craze that kills people. It's basically sentient, murderous marshmallow fluff, and in spite of the horrible dangers being clearly shown on screen, it's still somehow appetizing as hell. Sort of like that old Cool Whip commercial where the flying Cool Whip tub sprinkles all over a kid's cookie sandwich. Mm -mm. 
Pumpkinhead was notable for being Creature Effects legend Stan Winston's directorial debut, but it feels a bit like it was made from Aliens leftovers. It stars Lance Henriksen squaring off against a gigantic monster puppet, but instead of like Android versus Aliens in a spaceship, Pumpkinhead's about a farmer fighting a demon in a rustic autumnal harvest time countryside. And the demon itself seems like basically a pumpkin spice queen alien. I mean, that is a compliment. That actually sounds like a great dessert treat. I like that. That's a good... It's Stan Winston presents a rustic hayride of terror. Pumpkins, everybody. Come on down to Dunkin' Donuts for the pumpkin spice demons. That movie's based on a poem. I don't know why. Poems are from nerds. Poem can head. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Virus was a wet, expensive mess of a film that bombed horrifically at the box office in which most people either didn't see, hated, or forgot about entirely, but it had some badass biomechanical creature designs that came to life with a great mix of practical and digital effects, and they don't get nearly enough love. The host was one of Korean auteur Bong Joon-ho's first hits in the West. It's a touching, dysfunctional family comedy, a bit like Little Miss Sunshine, but with a terrifying monster in place of a beauty pageant. And that terrifying monster needs an action figure so I can put him on my desk and scare away real people in real life and be a loser, lonely man who and watches that's, horror films at night. That's really what we're getting at here, is we want toys of all of these fake animal men. I think a few of them did get toys over the years, but they need new ones. Somebody get Todd McFarlane on the phone, tell him to stop trifling around with Fortnite and my Hero Academia. We need more monster toys, darn it. What are your favorite underrated horror movie monsters? Let your us dad. know in the comments. What? Your dad. Anyway, let us know in the comments what your favorite underrated movie monsters are. And please, like, don't say one of those, those, those mainstream ones. We're talking about the underground loser monsters that nobody loves except for weirdos like us. Thank you for watching. We love you. Sincerely, your favorite loser weirdo monsters. Happy ha Halloween. You almost said Hanukkah, didn't you? Maybe. Ha ha ha.